Good evening, how are you? Well, it's really comfortable out, but I've been <laughs> feeling an increasing amount of moistness in the air, so hopefully I won't get caught in a rainstorm. As a kid, occasionally I was in situations where uh, people would act up and they'd get into a, a, f a fight or threaten to be in a fist fight, nothing too serious. And uh, the parent or proprietor, as the occasion arose, would say, why don't you take this outside? Well, the Supreme Court has decided to do that. Kagan, not too long ago, Associate Justice Kagan, was speaking about the legitimacy of a court depends upon its trust. This is a line that I agree with, and that, uh, as I mentioned before, that um, Breyer would, would say in his books and his lectures and so forth, that consider how a court without an army and weapons uh, doesn't have to coerce the public because the public trusts the court. And that's, that's the objective for any legitimate court. And we see in third worlds <laughs> where that's not the formula and that the courts draw power from, well, forces of police, brown shirts. Okay, so Kagan is saying something that needs to be said. And she's said as well that you have to look for the path of the law, the legitimacy of the holding in a particular case, the kinds of things that law students in legal method in the first year of law school consider, and then they consider it for the rest of their lives, presumably getting more subtle and smarter about it and being able to parse out how this is done rightly. And that's why guys like me and lawyers across the country were so upset with the Alito decision as an exercise in the law, because it wasn't. And then when you consider the content of the specific decision and how far reaching it was, then what you see is that it was an ends justifies a means choice. It was a decision to affect a political change that could not be justified by the direction of the law, by precedent. And, and recently, in the last couple of days, uh, another one of my heroes, Ted Kennedy, uh, I had worked for Jack Kennedy as a freshman in high school, Bobby Kennedy when I was in college, and finally, as an adult, I was old enough to help Ted Kennedy when he ran for president in 1980. And uh, I got to, to deal with him a fair amount on the Hill as well when I worked on the House uh, Judiciary and the House Labor Committee. So uh, he's a hero of mine. And in this particular instance on the Judiciary Committee, he had a conversation with Alito when Alito wanted to get on the bench. And he asked him about what is your position on abortion and so forth. And he said, well, it's settled case law, which is what we've heard recently and that has been con contradicted by the people, including Alito. And so Ted Kennedy asked him, well, there was this decision you rendered while you were, or memo that you wrote, while you were in the Justice Department. And Alito said, well, you know, I was young and I, I wanted to, uh, you know, perform for my superiors. Now, the way Ted Kennedy read that is if you were gonna lie to keep a job in the Department of Justice what would you be willing to do to get on the Supreme Court as an associate justice? So Ted voted against his confirmation, rightly so. And now Alito is out there upset about what Kagan is saying. And he's saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't be putting down the Supreme Court. You shouldn't be questioning its legitimacy. And uh, Roberts has said uh, something along the lines of, well, you just have to accept the fact uh, of disagreement. But you see, there it is. This is one of those mealy mouth things that bad lawyers say. And that's what I'm saying about Roberts. He is not acting as a chief judge when he says this is just about a disagreement. 
This is about a provision that was upheld for 50 years by various judges from various backgrounds with various philosophies. And then, without any identifiable exception, six members of the court politically hacked it as they were hacks themselves. And they put in place this garbage that is offensive to women, offensive to men, offensive to common sense, and to lawyers, it is offensive because the process is not respect for a prior decision. It is not respect for a settled precedent. It is a power grab on a political spectrum that is not to be found in a impartial court of law. And that's a problem. Because when we lose trust in our courts, and if we lose trust in our elections, what are we left with? We are left with chaos. I have in the past quoted, probably repeatedly, because I think it's so on spot, is the discussion between Sir Thomas More and his son-in-law, who was saying, upset, that King Henry VIII was really attacking Moore because Moore as a Christian, he wanted him to accept the king's made up court so that the king could marry someone that the Roman Catholic Church did not want him to marry. And Roper, who is the son-in-law of Sir Thomas More, said, I would tear down every law I could to get at the devil. And Moore, who may have appreciated his loyalty, but not his judgment, said to him, oh yeah? Well, when you tore down all the laws, and these are men's laws, not God's laws, and you were standing there on a vast wasteland, how could you stand in the wind that would blow? And I'm paraphrasing the, uh, well, reconstitution of this confrontation. And that's my question. How can America stand if it doesn't respect the law, if it doesn't give good reason for a change in the law, that is, a movement, and if people like Thomas go and say, oh yeah, you know, this is what could happen in several other cases. That's not what the courts are about. That's not what they're supposed to do. That is not legitimacy. And last night in the debates, you know, like some other people, I listened to the one in Pennsylvania. And I thought that uh, there are questions raised, but I was comfortable with the Democrat. But the one, the one judgment that they both had that I disagreed with was, how, what do we do to cure what's wrong with the court? And Biden should have agreed to this. And every politician in America should agree to this because if we do not repair the courts, we have compromised our ability to stand in the wind that will blow. That's simple. Now you may be, <laughs> change of topic, you may be reassured to know that our government is gonna formally investigate UFOs. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? And um, the, uh, well, there's, uh, of all the elections in America, which we're covering closely and guessing and hoping, and the one thing we all can do is just go vote, is the election down in Brazil, where Bolsonaro, who has done more to burn the forest down, the rainforest, and to compromise the world because the trees in South America are the lungs of the earth. They suck up the carbon dioxide and they give us air and you tear down those trees what you do is you release the carbon dioxide into the air and you lose this tool that tr transforms carbon dioxide into air and so why am i mentioning it because in this election a former president of brazil lula da silva is running and he promises to save the rainforest and of course, the, the lies proliferate. Bolsonaro is saying, oh, this will help the poor people. Really? 
No, it will help the profiteers who want to mine and destroy it, turn it into a moon surface, not only compromising the environment, but destroying this natural resource across South America. I've always been frustrated that the nation states of the world don't bond together and tell Brazil this is unacceptable because what Brazil is doing threatens the world, threatens the peoples of the world. But there I am. Uh, that's what I think, and that's what I say. Um, it is a beautiful evening, and uh, I have to accommodate my my mental scheduling <laughs> to coming out earlier because it's getting dark. And that may, may not be obvious because the camera in this phone doesn't need a lot of light, but it does need light. <laughs> so here I am in my cathedral of trees, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.